Welcome back. Hope you're having a great day. Ryan Jackson here once again. We're in Article 722 now, which is a new article in the 2023 code, Cables for Power Limited and Fault Managed Power Circuits. Okay, so once you get through Article 710, the code takes on a very different look and feel. Once we're past Article 710, then we're into the limited energy circuits for the most part. And one of the things that you might notice is, quite frankly, a, a lot of repetition, especially if you are familiar with the 2017 and previous versions of the code. Uh, so you had rules in Article 725, which was Class 1, Class 2, and Class 3 power limited circuits. Then you had 760, which is fire alarm, 770, which is optical fiber. And then, of course, you have Chapter 8, and in the 2017 code, it was Article 800, which was mainly twisted pair, uh, Article 810, which is satellite dishes and antennas, and Article 820, which is coaxial cable. Now, I never cover Articles 830 and 840 because those are network-powered or premises-powered broadband systems. And sure, we have broadband, but Article 830 and 840, they end at the network interface unit. So the utility comes in with broadband, and then once it hits that unit, then we use Article 800 and 770 and 820 from that point outward. So Article 830 and 840 only applies to the utility side which we don't really get into. So I never talk about 830 and 840 when I do my limited energy discussions. I always go from what was Article 725 through 820. What was tricky with that is there's so much repetitious information. Uh, you would go to Article 800, which was telephone, right? And then 820, which is coaxial cable. And like I said, 725 for power and signaling, and 760 for fire alarm, 770 for optical fiber. And each one of those articles had their own rules for plenum rated wire. And they all said the exact same thing. If you're in a plenum ceiling, use plenum rated wire. If you're penetrating a fire resistance rated assembly, use a through penetration fire stop system. Uh, separation from in, from conductors, neat and workmanlike manner, securing and supporting. You seriously, you had the exact same rules copied and pasted in seven different articles in the back of the code book. Uh, they could have condensed 50 pages of code into 10. Well, beginning with the 2020 code, they actually started to do that. They took chapter 8 and they took all of the repetitious uh, information plenums, neat and workmanlike, securing, supporting, fire rated assemblies, right? They took all of the, the repeated information and they created a new Article 800. And they said, okay, look, here's the general rules for everything in Chapter 8. And then Articles 8, what became 805 and 820, they went from 10 pages each to like a page and a half each, which was great. We did the same thing in the 2023 for Chapter 7. All right, so 725. 760, which is, of course, remote control signaling and fire alarm. And we wanted to do it with fiber optic article 770, but some weird stuff ended up kind of happening and we couldn't do it. So we wanted to do the same thing in chapter 7. And that's what article 722 covers. So article 722 takes care of the repetition in chapter 7 and it just tries to condense it. I mean, look, is this going to change the way you wire a building? No but it makes the code book a better code book. And I think that's almost always worth pursuing. So 722, new article, cables for power limited and fault managed power circuits. Now we haven't talked about a fault managed power circuit yet. That's gonna be a class four circuit. And we're gonna talk about that in the new article 726. But for right now, 722, new article. And look, all it does is it improves the usability of the NEC. Again, this is not gonna change the way you wire a building. It just makes the code book better, and I think it does. So 722.1, the scope. Article 722 covers the general requirements for cables of class two and class three circuits, power limited fire alarm circuits, the so low voltage fire alarm, and class four fault managed power circuits. All right, so, this is, again, just kind of the, the general requirements for some of these uh, Chapter 7 requirements. So, what's the rules for penetrating a fire resistance rated assembly? You, know, you, you follow 300.21. Do you really have to tell me that four different times in Chapter 7? No, 
just tell me once. That's all I need to know, right? So that's what we're doing in Article 722. Got to remove abandoned limited energy circuit cables. And it's been in the code since I think 2005, still, or maybe 2002, still in the code. But again, why are you telling me three different times in three different articles? Just tell me, look, if it's a low voltage cable and it gets abandoned, then you got to remove it unless it's marked for future use with a tag. Cables installed in buildings have to be listed. That's true whether it's class two or class three or optical fiber or class four or communications. Again, just tell me once. 722.179, this is kind of an interesting one. So all of the markings uh, for all the cables are, are now in article 702 instead of 725. So again, you know, platinum rated cable, mark it with the letter P. Riser rated cable, mark it with the letter R, right? So this cable here, says that it is CL2, CL2R or CMR, which is what? Class two riser rated or communications riser rated. Now, what does that letter R mean? Well, we know it means riser, but what does that mean? <laughs> well, if you're in uh, anything but dwellings, if you're not in residential, as soon as you penetrate a floor, you have to use a riser rated cable. All right, so a riser rated cable doesn't, uh, doesn't transmit flame as rapidly as a non-riser rated cable. So it doesn't behave as well as a plenum rated cable in fire conditions, but it performs much better than a non-riser rated cable. And when we, when we light this cable on fire and it's going through a floor, we don't want that flame propagating from floor to floor. So we have to use a riser rated cable. Now, one of the interesting things here in the marking requirements I've always thought is this requirement. Cables are not allowed to have their voltage ratings marked on them. I think that's a really important rule, and I think it's a good rule, because I'll, I'll tell you right now, if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and you see a homeowner, if they see the marking on this cable and it says 300 volts, yeah, <laughs> you see where I'm going with this, right? If it says 300 volts, they're going to wire their basement with it. Now, is this cable actually rated for 300 volts? Yes, it is. The fact that it's rated as a, as a CMR cable means it has to have a 300 volt insulation. Class two cable, CL2 cable, is rated 150 volts. Class three cable and communications cable are rated 300 volts. So it has a voltage rating but we don't want to tell anybody what that rating is. And I think that's a good requirement. There is an exception, however. So looking at this cable here, here we've got this cable that's a 60 degree cable and it is rated 150 volts. Now by itself, that's a violation. It can't say 150 volts because then somebody's going to wire their house with it. But sometimes other standards require that the voltage be marked. And if that's the case, then so be it. So cables that are listed for multiple applications. That cable we just saw, right? That was listed as CL2R and CMR. If one or the other of those two listings actually required the voltage to be marked on the cable, well then so be it, it's gonna be marked on the cable. So cables listed for multiple applications can have their voltage ratings marked on them if it's required by one of those listings. So there you go, a new article 722. Uh, in my opinion, I, I think it's a good article. It makes the code book better. It, it, rips code, it rips pages out of the code, which I think we're all going to agree. Code book's getting a little unwieldy. So if we can make the code book smaller, let's make the code book smaller. All right, see you on the next video.